Greetings and welcome to the Talk with History podcast. I am your host, Scott, here with my wife and historian, Jen. Hello. On this podcast, we talk about history's continuing impact on us and our personal journey through YouTube as we continue to explore, record, and share our history walks with you. Now, before we get into our main topic, I want to ask for your reviews and feedback. Reviews on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and anywhere you listen truly help the show. And if you don't have an Apple device, you can ask us questions over on Instagram at Walk With History or our website, talkwithhistory.com. And don't forget to check out our other podcast, The History Buzz, where we interview folks while chatting over about history over a couple of drinks and let the conversation wander where it may. Now, childhood stories of ghosts and goblins are common in every culture. And here in America, we are no different. But some ghost stories become so well-known, they eventually get turned into a proper story by writers, poets, and yes, even Disney animators. <laughs> the Legend of Sleepy Hollow and the Headless Horseman may be known to most because of the classic Disney cartoon that surfaces every fall. But did you know that Washington Irving penned this story from the actual location that much of this legend was based on? So, Jen, why don't you tell us a little bit about why we're talking about The Legend of Sleepy Hollow today? Well, because I, I visited uh, Sleepy Hollow, That's right. New York, and got to see a lot of the actual locations mixed in with some of the folklore. And um, the city has really embrace the story yeah. because it originally was just Terrytown, New York. And uh, after the story became so popular, they actually changed half of the city to Sleepy Hollow. They yeah, changed and, the and that was like in the 90s. In the 90s, yeah. yeah to capitalize. So, so it was just so, it was so popular. Yeah, I think they were closing down a, a GE plant or something was closing down there. So they're like, how do we draw tourists in? Exactly. Oh, uh, okay. How do we keep yeah. people business that makes sense coming here so it was just very cool to go there i mean i had watched that animated movies from the time i was a kid so it came out in 1949 it was it was combined with mr toad that's right so it was like mr toad and ichabod and ichabod crane is the second story yeah because it was like it was it was mr toad it, it was the, the bigger picture Larger umbrella of some story, like wind some in the willows, wind of the willows yeah. like some storytelling, yeah. and they put Ichabod Crane in there. Ichabod Crane, yeah. And what's so great? There's a couple of things that's really great. I mean, I think the animation is wonderful. Yeah, it's just classic old but school it's Disney. Bing Crosby, yeah, it's, and he does yeah. all the voices. Yeah, he he's he basically he's telling the story. He's telling the story. It's almost like in a funny way. It's almost like drunk history. Yeah. Right, like where the person's telling the story yeah. and everybody else is kind of. But well, it, Bing Crosby tells this whole story. He sings all the songs. And that's kind of what um. Washington Irving did too, because Washington Irving doesn't tell the story from Washington Irving. He tells it from Knickerbockers. Oh, his, his his pen name. His yeah, his, his storyteller. Yeah. So it's the same kind of premise. Oh, interesting. Knickerbockers telling you this story that uh, he heard, and you uh, know, so it's cool. the same kind of like premise there. Yeah. So, but it was a really awesome place to go and see, and it's it's basically just one street broadway yep. street in sleepy hollow and you can that whole street will start you know in the in our video we start at the old dutch church and the sleepy hollow cemetery because washington irving is actually buried there yeah but that's actually backwards in the story because in the story he's actually oh he goes so in the story of Ichabod crane if you've ever read the story and please be ready it is it is colorful and it has some uh, not socially accepted terms of today. Oh, I didn't know that. So be ready for things That's, that... I mean, because it was... When did he write it? 1820. That's when he wrote it. I think, yeah, it was published in 1820. He published okay. that and Rip Van Winkle at okay. the same time. Um, it's towards the end of his life because he'll die in 1859. So I guess 39 years before he dies. Yeah. Um, and really a lot of the story, and I talk about this in the video is it's just Ichabod mostly it's Ichabod. He's kind of like this gangly scarecrowy character. The, the 
the Disney movie does a really good job of pulling in the real parts of the story, like the real words, like his feet are like shovels. And that that's true. Oh, right? interesting. Very... And it, Dan, you said too, that like even in the, even in the story, they talk a lot. He spends a lot of time about the food and how much he, food he's he... so like grotesquely fixated on food. Oh, like every time he sees like birds, he thinks of birds swimming in their own gravy and how much it would be good to eat them. So it's like he's very... Fi- so I can kind of understand that. Because if you think about in the 1700s, early 1800s, food wasn't readily available like yeah. it is today. It yeah, has so to really you, be prepared. You would, yeah, you would fixate on a little You would fixate. It. And since he's the schoolmaster, he doesn't have someone making food for him regularly. Yeah. Yep. And so he's staying in people's houses. Yeah, he's unmarried. He's unmarried. Yep. And... and at the time, the way a schoolmaster kind of worked is the city would come, the people would come together and basically pay. If you had children who were school age, you would you would put in a, some money to pay the schoolmaster. Okay. And then the schoolmaster would go from like a patron to patron's house per week mm-hmm. unless he had his own building as part of that salary to live in. And he kind of lives in the schoolhouse in the story. Okay. Because they do a good job of it again in the Disney because he like gets ready to go see Katrina Van Tassel at yeah. the party yep. looking through the broken glass yeah. and fixing yeah, yeah. himself in the schoolhouse. He That's the same thing. He lives in the schoolhouse. He borrows gunpowder from the patron he's staying at at the time. And gunpowder's the horse. The horse. So yeah. he borrows his horse to go to the party. And, and Ichabod's kind of upset because it's like this old, gangly, nasty horse, but it's which all... Is, which in the Disney cartoon is hilarious. It's hilarious. I yeah. love it. It's, I mean, the horse is like sleeping and it's like yeah. its hindquarters are it's like up on a gravestone, just kind of like looking around, yeah. smiling, you know. And it, he gets it from Van Ripper. So it's kind of understood that this is a Dutch colony and Terrytown was a Dutch colony. It's the old Dutch church. So... Van Katrina Van Tessel. Yep. Brom Bones, his real name is Van Brunt. Yeah. He's staying with Van Ripper. So it's all these van, you know, Vons Vans, um, Dutch background. And the Sleepy Hollow, uh, the, the Headless Horseman story is it's it's wrought in truth. <laughs> the Headless Horseman is not a new ghostly character right the the irish have their own headless horsemen the british have their own the scottish have their own that's been around since the middle ages it's a very easy ghost character yeah when you think about it, someone running around with their head with no head it's a very easy ghost character right yeah oh my gosh yeah Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) people travel by horses yeah and someone doesn't have a head oh my gosh it's a ghost character like a very easy one but what makes it unique to the legend of sleepy hollow is there was an actual incident that happened during the Battle of White Plains during the Revolutionary War in 1776, where a Hessian soldier, so the Hessian soldiers were paid for soldiers by the British. They were German who came over to help fight the Revolutionary War against the Americans. Um, and his head is taken off by a cannon. Yeah. And there's actual documentation, and I kind of allude to it in the story, where people kind of like stopped and were like, did that guy's head just yeah, yeah. Did, 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 you, did you just see that <laughs> like everybody stopped like the the hessians the british and the americans were all like well and, and and to that point too it's like that story would become very well known because everybody would be like yo did you hear about the dude who got his head literally shot off by a cannon, <laughs> by a cannon. you know so then and this i don't know if this is actually true but the folklore goes that the Van Tassel family buries him in their plot. Oh, I didn't. I don't remember that at part. the old Dutch church. Oh, OK. So that's kind of where that whole thing comes. He's in an unmarked grave. Oh, interesting. The Van Tassel plot is right to the right. When you see the old Dutch church and I'm there, there's a Katrina Van Tassel listed on one of the um, gravestones right to the right of Old Dutch Church. Yeah, and if, you, if you've if you never read the story, right, and you're not familiar with the character names in the cartoon, in the Disney cartoon, Katrina Van Tassel, she's the blonde, is she, is she, she's like the one that they're pursuing. Yes, so Katrina Van Tassel's the only daughter, the only heir to Master Van Tassel's fortune. And since Ichabod is so fixated on food, they have a huge farm 
all these animals. His her mother is constantly making pies and constantly making, you know, meat right. and and roasting fowl. And so he's so like fixated. He, even in the cartoon, like they didn't they. He like took her out to a picnic. Yes. And right? they have all that food. Like, yeah. That's kind of what they're alluding to. And he's so like, I want the food. She's cute. She's 18 years old. She's the, uh, but it's the, he wants to be master of the house. He wants the Van Tassel's money. Right. His, he wants to be, he wants to inherit all of that. Right. So the thing I don't like about Ichabod. that they really don't go into in the cartoon cartoon is he's very full of himself. Oh really? Like he, he thinks he's going to have no problem getting Katrina ah. because he's the smartest man in town. Yeah. I'm the school teacher. I can carry a great conversation with. I mean, Katrina's they kind of allude father. to that a little bit. Like when he walks in right and Bing Crosby singing the song, yeah. Ichabod Crane, yeah. all the other women are swooning over Ichabod yes. Crane. Like it's, it's because very, it's very yes. comical, but that's probably what they're alluding to. Yes. They're alluding to like, he is the, the intelligence is so intoxicating for these women. The yeah. intelligence makes him look so, you know, handsome and yeah. he's, he's such a catch and he also gives singing lessons. Yeah. He's, right? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so he knows. And that's also in the story. He right. gives all these singing lessons. And it's, and it's great because it's Bing Crosby who's got it like a world-class generational yeah. singing voice, yeah. you know, playing that part, yes. you know? Yeah. That's great. And so, so that's the only part I don't like. So he kind of like, he makes Brom Bones feel, he belittles Brom Bones a lot. He's like, because Brom Bones is like a, a laborer. He's like a, um, he works with iron. And yeah, you said uh, he's a, like a army veteran or something like that, He's a veteran. That, right? That's he's why he knows the story yeah. of the Headless Horseman. Okay. And that's why he'll tell it in a Because, of course, story. all the soldiers are telling mm-hmm. these stories. Yeah. But a couple of the things that they really do, they take directly from the story and put into the Disney movie is he, he does things more for mischief and not for ill will. Yeah, he, so that's he's very kind of more of just like yes. a jokester. He's a jokester. He's not yeah. trying to hurt people. Yeah. He's not trying to. He's, he just wants to have a good time. Yeah. And so he has like these, the the Brom Bone Boys yeah. or his guys, and they allude to like people hearing them riding at night and like laughing and yeah, just out having a good time, having a good time. And they kind they don't really get to that in the Disney movie, but that's kind of what's in the story. So you have Ichabod Crane, loves food, wants to marry this girl because it's going to just mean so much fortune for him. Uh, with livestock and and you know all the all the wealth he's going to have, and not just money, but with everything, the, and everything. Yeah. And Brom Bones likes her too, and Ichabod just kind of makes fun of that, like you're never going to get her. And and but the the issue here is that Ichabod really hasn't impressed Katrina. Brahms impressed Katrina. Ichabod's impressed her father. Oh, that's so. That's what they say in the story. Uh-huh. Oh, interesting. So her father is all on board with Ichabod, almost oh, like an understanding. Oh, wow! But Katrina wants Brom. Oh, interesting. And she's almost kind of like using Ichabod to make Brom jealous. Oh, right. And God, she kind of like listens to him. Women, but she wants <laughs> Brom. And so, so then the 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 whole um. The ghost story, the night of the ghost story. So so you'll see in the video, we go to, it's an apartment building now. I think it's like 18 Broadway. I don't remember. But it's an apartment building. Now. That's where the Van Tassel farm was. And if you see the Disney movie, it does, they do such a good job of making it look like the rolling farm hills yeah. of what Terrytown probably looked like yeah. in the 1820s. Yeah. Right? So these beautiful rolling hills. And so this is where the Van Tassels are having like a harvest party. Yeah. So you were, you were you were basically standing right where that would have happened. Would have, would have happened. Yeah. Which is very typical of the time. After you have a harvest, after it's fall, Halloween, you have a big party because you're not planting yeah you have all this food yeah you have all this food washington irving writes about sleepy hollow it's like this glen outside of tarrytown that was also kind of known for its haunted folklore and it was known for that because it was kind of passed down that the american indians had like areas there that they had burial grounds and things. And so there was some haunted folklore from Sleepy Hollow. Oh, okay. And he said like you could just feel it in the air. Yeah. And so that's kind of also why he uses that as his setting for the story. Yep. So Ichabod's at the party. Brahm. So Ichabod, not only is he well read, but he 
is superstitious. And they, yeah. they talk about this in the story. They don't yeah, really they don't do. go with this in the Disney movie that he But but if you watch if you watch our video, I do a pretty good job of kind of you you say that and then I'm showing it right in the cartoon. Yeah, like he's showing throwing the salt. Yeah, he's throwing the salt and Brom Bones sees it and he kind of he, you yeah. can see the the light kind of click on yeah. for Brom Bones. He's like, Okay, this is how I'm gonna get it. That's how I'm gonna get him. But in the story they it's much more direct. He likes to read these stories of witchcraft. If you remember the Salem Witch Trials, Cotton Mather is big in the Salem Witch Trials. He's the one who um, judges the women. And so Ichabod is reading Cotton Mather's oh, really? account of witchcraft in the New World. Yeah, because that would have been a thing then. Yeah. yeah. And so the women also like to hear him tell these stories when he's giving him music lessons and stuff. Oh, interesting. So it's much more apparent in the story that he is superstitious. And yeah. Kind of a scaredy cat, right? Yeah. So Brom Bones is like, oh, this guy keeps talking down to me. This guy keeps thinking he's better than me. I'm going to tell a ghost story. Yeah. Because I know he gets scared. And I know he has to ride home by himself tonight. Yeah. So I'm going to tell the story of the Headless Horseman. Yeah. And I'm going to use the true story of the guy who right. was a Hessian soldier. And I'm going to make this all up. And so in the story, he tells the story in the, 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 again, it's not in the Disney movie, but in the story, Ichabod goes to seal the deal with Katrina and you don't know what happens, but Ichabod is probably rebuffed because he comes out really mad. Okay. So he and, asks for her hand or and whatever. He, and he's like, he's huffy and puffy. and He puts the saddle on gunpowder and he grabs gunpowder and he just rides off. Oh, and interesting. So you just assume that Katrina has rejected him. Sure. Right. Now that doesn't, that's not in the Disney movie. Yeah. Cause in the, in the Disney movie, he's just riding home. He's riding home. And it, and it's interesting too, right? A little bit of that, that history piece is, is Brahms telling the story. Right. And again, this is the Disney cartoon, but everybody else is kind of laughing and having a good time because they probably all know the story. Yes. But they're they're there having a party and he's singing a song and everybody else is singing along with him. And Ichabod Crane's freaking out. Yes. Right. He's scared to death. Right. He's the new guy in town. He doesn't know this story. Yes. So I think the way they make it seem in. They kind of don't even talk about it in the Disney movie, but in the the story, he's kind of forgotten that fear because he's so mad. So he, that's he why he just, he just that he just gets on his horse and leaves because you can imagine other people would be leaving this party. Sure, yeah, and you could probably tag along with people. Yeah, but he's so mad that he doesn't even think about it. He's been rejected. He had no idea she would reject him. He's mm-hmm. the school teacher. He's the smartest guy in town. So he doesn't really think about that fear. He gets on the horse and starts riding back. Yeah. In the Disney, they don't really. He's already on his horse riding. Yeah, back. they don't. They don't really yeah. talk about that. So he's on his horse riding back, and the next part we go to in the well, he, he has the same kind of things that in the Disney movie. He hears toads. He hears things. He thinks they're the, scary. Yeah, the wind. He hears the, the wind. Yeah. Starts to figure out. He whistles. Whistling helps him calm down. Yeah. That's and then he hits the tulip tree. And it this is not mentioned in the Disney movie at all, but we go to it in the video. It's the tree where Major Andre was captured. So Major Andre was the British spy who was helping Benedict Arnold sell yeah. smuggle out the plans of West Point. Right. And, and and if we just like pause for two seconds to let the non the not the non history buffs like catch their breath. Right. This is the the Benedict Arnold, right? Yes. The hey, you know, when you're called when you call someone a Benedict Arnold, like you're calling them a traitor, a traitor, right? Hey, you, you know, don't don't be the Benedict Arnold or whatever like that. And this was the British. He was like the chief British spy master so, or something like oh, that. Oh my gosh! So, okay, George Washington's right hand man was Benedict Arnold. That's right. And Benedict Arnold, for for not to be a point, but if we ever talk about this, he's probably the reason why the French joined the revolution. Because at one of the ba- I forget the bad the name of the battle, but uh, he's the one who rode out in front, Benedict Arnold. Yeah, and he's the one who turned the tides. And yeah, he was like he. I mean, he was a big pivotal he character was a on pivotal. the American side. And when the French, they had a couple French generals there. When they saw him do that, they knew the Americans. We're going to win this war. Yeah. And that's when they gave all the money to and come. Then, and then am I right in remembering, and maybe this is just the drunk history that we watched the other day, that Benedict Arnold kind of gets turned because he falls in love with a woman. Yes. 
Is that so? Basically, <laughs> so Peggy. Man, mm-hmm. this like this is like second time now that like a woman's like just kind of playing these guys. And so, so she kind of had a thing with Andre. She kind of had a thing with Andre, uh, and Andre Andre kind of like turns her, and okay. she's young and eighteen. Arnold's older in his thirties, and she's beautiful. I mean, Hamilton thinks she's the most beautiful woman. George Washington thinks she's a beautiful woman. Oh, wow. And so she kind of tells Benedict Arnold, no one appreciates you. No one likes you. No one, no, you're not giving the credit you're Wait, that, due. That's like, if you think about that, that's like straight up spy craft yeah. right there, right? Yeah. Here's Andre, the British spy master, mm-hmm. right? Turned her and got her to turn Benedict yeah. Arnold, the guy who was like this huge figure on the yes. American side. So they, again, that's kind of us veering, so this off, veering, is veering off the path. Just so you kind of understand so this, this but tree. This is, so Andre... So that, is, is that's, the per- that's who we're talking about, so, this British spy yes. master. From Van Tassel's house on the way to Sleepy Hollow, you'll pass the tree that during the Revolutionary War, this is where Andre was caught. Yep. He was caught. He, was, he wasn't he was dressed in a military uniform. He had the plans for West Point in his boot. Benedict Donald planned to hand over the plans of West Point to the British so they could have the fort. Yep. And Andre's caught. By the time Andre's caught, Benedict Donald has already fled to England. So he never gets... He, he lives there the rest of his life. Andre's killed. Andre is put on trial and executed. Not far from where that tree is, okay. but that tree is where he's caught. And if you go there today, Patriot Park is there. We're there in the video. There's a statue and a marker all about the people who caught Andre. Because yeah. basically, I, who knows what would have happened if they would have gotten the plans for West Point. Yeah. It's a pivotal point. It's a pivotal fort. Now it's... Now it's the military um, academy. academy, but at the time it was a fort right on the Hudson River. Yeah, and so he hits this tree, and that's right when he hits this tree, he hears laughing. Is Ichabod? Ichabod. Yeah, and it's the headless. This is when he encounters the headless horseman for the first time. Yeah. So when you watch our video, this is now the separation point between Terrytown and Sleepy Hollow in real life. Right on the border. This is where they have now separated the two towns. So from that tree on down to the Old Dutch Church and the Old Dutch Cemetery is now Sleepy Hollow. So this is where he hits, finds, encounters the headless horseman. So when you think from this point to the bridge is that that chase and it's the last two pages yeah, of the whole the, story in the, in the disney movie right yes. as the headless horseman is like rearing up and he's swiping at him yeah. and he's doing all the stuff and he's trying to run away and- he has the horse and now it's it's just, it's as funny in the story as the disney movie is yeah. because ichabod is just all elbows and knees and he's he's his saddle starts to slide off the side and he's yeah. sliding off with it and then it, he just lets the saddle go and he wraps his arms around which, the, which they, I mean, they show that in the cartoon. <laughs> they show that in the cartoon. And he's like just yeah. holding on for dear Hold life. Hold on for and dear poor life. gunpowder. They allude to gunpowder in his prime was probably like a stud of a horse. Yeah. But it's like 20 years. <laughs> <laughs> this is old, this is old. rickety horse <laughs> running true. for dear life. So um, so it's, it's almost humorous. Now, the things that they, the Disney movie does, it's not true. Is a headless horseman is, is carrying his head. In the story. In the story, right. So it's almost like... And that wouldn't play in a, in a 1950s <laughs> cartoon? Which I don't I, know when they made it. 60s? It's 1949. 49, okay. But I don't quite get it. Because I'm like, is he looking for a head? Because he has his head. <laughs> so I'm like, what's he... Does he just want to kill people? Like, does he need a live head? I think he's just an angry ghost. <laughs> he's an angry headless horseman. So he's carrying his he head. Kn- he knows that this pumpkin is in his head. So he's 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 mad he and he wants to pumpkin. he wants to hit some. <laughs> so there's no pumpkin. Like so there's no jack o' lantern. That's that's the Disney making it Disney eyeing. Yeah, so in the, the in the Washington Irving story, he, has he was head. carrying his head. He has his head. But they do allude to the Jack Lantern later. Not Jack Lantern, the, the pumpkin, pumpkin. And pumpkin. at the very end. So he chases him all the way to the bridge and in the disney movie it's a covered bridge but th- in real life that bridge was never covered yeah um and like i i say in the video most covered bridges are north not that that far down not that far south in new york um and he he crosses the bridge and the headless horseman f- flings his head at him yeah and he hits ichabod in the head with, with his, his head, head. Yeah. <laughs> and Ichabod goes rolling off the horse and that's and then that's all you hear about that until the next morning Van Ripper gunpowder is in his 
field eating. Yeah. And he's like, oh, you're back. Where's Ichabod? And they go looking for him. And when they, they make it to the bridge and they find his hat and a smashed pumpkin. Yeah. So not a jack-o'-lantern, but right. a smashed pumpkin. Yeah. And no sign of Ichabod. Yeah. And so in the story is the same thing. Like people allude, was he spirited away by the headless horseman? It also talks to how Brahm always had a knowing look yeah. every time someone talked about the Headless Horseman. Yeah. So it's almost like, and Brahm, they also say in the story, was a, a master horseman. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Just like the Headless Horseman is. Master rider. Master yeah. rider. Yeah. So it's like, and so they are also, Knickerbocker talks about how somebody traveled away from Terrytown and comes back and says, oh, Ichabod is alive. I saw him. He, this is like years later. He became a judge. He has a family. Yeah. And da, da, da. So it's it's all kind of like a story, right? They're alluding to the whole kind of story of it all. But um, so we go to those locations. You get to see it's all on one main road yeah. now. Yep. We go to the statue. There's a statue there, yeah. which is cool to see. And in the statue, he's holding a, a jack-o'-lantern. Yeah. Just like yeah, the Disney mo- Most of the ones around, yeah. even like one of some of the headstone ones mm-hmm. that you went to, um, in uh, what was the park? The Patriot Park. Patriot Park is where the Andre tree is. Yeah. What's and where the, the statue is. Yeah, and there's another spot where there's like a little headstone kind of monument. So that's across thing. the right across from the old Dutch church is a manor, the F- Philip Manor. Yeah. And I go her. there. That is alluded to in the story where Ichabod again. He's a ladies' man. He likes to take women for walks after church. Yeah. So it's right across from the old Dutch church, and it's an and it's they make it. I mean it is the actual location where he would take his, the ladies for yeah. walks yeah, yeah. around the pond. Yeah. And there's a little marker and, and, and to your end, the marker kind of shows, right. Ichabod Crane being chased by the headless horseman. Yeah. They had this horseman holding the pumpkin. It shows the church. It shows the tree. So it's kind of all these kind of key points of the story that were really kind of key points of history. Yes. And so Washington Irving, um, again, he is the youngest of 11. Yeah. His mom names him after George Washington. Oh, okay. And he serves in the military. He serves during the War of 1812. He's an aide-de-camp. So an aide-de-camp is what Hamilton is to George Washington. Yeah. They help um, the senior military yeah. with their paperwork yeah. and things like that. So um, Washington Irving's an aide-de-camp. So he does a lot of writing. And he's perfecting his writing then. And he's he's writing articles for new magazines at the time. Actually, one of his magazines is one of the first to publish um, The Star Spangled Banner by Francis Scott Key. Oh, yeah. But uh, he's stationed with Colonel Ichabod Crane during in 1814 at the same fort in New York. And Washington Irving liked to collect unique names. Yeah. And this, so that's where he got so that's where the so, character. So, yes. Yeah. Ichabod Crane is a real person. It's He wasn't a schoolmaster. He wasn't this guy. But the name is what he liked. And so that's where that comes from. And that's, so that's so cool. And like and it's cool, too, that we kind of stumbled upon it could, like Ichabod Crane being a real person. His son was actually like the Surgeon General at one point in time who attended Abraham Lincoln. Right. And we saw his grave in Arlington. So there's all these cool ties to, mm-hmm. to all these things. Um, so this fact it's and a fun fiction, story. it's a very American story. Yeah. Washington Irving is one of the first authors to earn acclaim in Europe. Oh, really? Yes. Because, you know, America is young. Yeah. Right. And he's writing these stories and they're going to Europe and people are like, wow, this is an amazing author. So he, he'll die in Terrytown. Um, about 30, 40 years later after he has um, published this story. And he's buried. We go to his grave yep. at the uh, Old Dutch Cemetery. You see it. You're not allowed to go inside the area. Yeah, it's all gated off. But he's, like I said, he's the youngest of 11. Eight eight of those children will survive to adulthood. So it's a lot of Irvings. Yeah. <laughs> and there yeah. was a like, big area. There. Yeah, yeah, big family plot. So. Yeah, that's a super fun story. I actually didn't get to go in person, but just editing it was a lot of fun because I have such fond memories and we watch that cart that Disney cartoon every year. So as we've learned this evening, Ichabod Crane and Brom Bones may have fought the classic battle to win over the maiden's heart. But when a late night horse ride home turns into the headless horseman, 
chasing you through the woods of Sleepy Hollow. Well, then the story goes from classic to pure legend. <laughs> So thank you for listening to the Talk With History podcast, and please reach out to us at our website, talkwithhistory.com. But more importantly, if you know someone else that might enjoy this podcast, please share this with them, especially if you think today's topic would interest a friend. Shoot them a text and tell them to look up the Talk With History podcast, because we rely on you, our community, to grow, and we appreciate you all every day. We'll talk to you next time. Thank you. Just gather around, and I'll elucidate on what goes on outside when it gets late. Long about midnight, the ghosts and banshees, they get together for their nightly jamboree. There's things with horns and saucer eyes, some with fangs about this size. Some are fat, and some are thin. And some don't even wear their skin. Oh, I'm telling you, brother, it's a frightful sight to see what goes on Halloween night. <laughs> When spooks have a midnight jamboree, they break it up with English glee. Don't so bad, but the one that's cursed is the headless horseman. He's the worst. That's why he's mine on Halloween night. But when he goes to jogging across the land, holding a noggin in his hand, demons take one look and groan in the hip. Road from far to known. Beware, take care, he rides alone. And there's no spook like spook and spur. They don't like him and he's really burnt. He swears to the longest day he's dead. He'll show them that he can get ahead. They say he's tired of his flaming top. He's got a yen to make a swap. So he rides one night each year to find a Head in the hollow here. Now he likes them little, he likes them big. Or in the middle, or awake. Black or white, or even red. The headless horseman, he's ahead with a hip, hip, and a clippity clap. He's out looking for a cotton chop. So don't stop to figure out a plan. You can't reason with a headless man. Now, if you doubt this tale is so, I met that spook just a year ago. Now, I didn't stop for a second look, but made for the bridge that spans the brook. But once you cross that bridge, my friend, the through his power end. So, when you're riding home tonight, make for the bridge with all your might. He'll be down in the hollow there. He needs your head to look out. He's out looking for a head to swap, so don't try to figure out a plan. You can't reason with a headless man.